Hey guys, Mike Lukic here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm really excited to put this video together. Uh, a few weeks ago, I shared a, a video and, and a post on my website where um, I gave a bit of a sneak peek of uh, this flop analysis workbook that I had been putting together. And I've had some awesome and, and, and great feedback from a, a number of, of you guys. Um, and um, as a result of that, I've decided to package it up into a product and make it available for sale on my website. So um, if you're on my site right now, uh, you can obviously already see this. Um, but if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, uh, I have a new products portion of my website, uh, on lukic.io, where you can purchase this spreadsheet and I've also put up uh, a couple other uh, worksheets as, as free resources. Um, but uh, really uh, what I plan for this section is, is a place where I put a lot of uh, the templates and spreadsheets and analyses that I put together as a part of the content that I create for this site. Uh, some of which uh, the, some of the more simpler templates or the, the more um, basic things uh, will be placed available for free as resources and some of the you know more complex ones that I spend a lot of time on will be put available for sale uh, and I plan on making more in the future but the rest of this video is I'm actually going to go through the rest of this workbook as a, a bit of a product demo for you guys. Um, I, I'm really, really proud of this worksheet. And, you know, one thing I will say as a big caveat right away is I, I actually don't think this is a resource for everyone. Um, I, I truly do, do believe that you do have to really be into the data side of the game in order to get some value from this. Um, but those that are into the data side of the game and those who um, spend time like I do uh, understanding things like equilibrium frequencies and um, aggregate data across a lot of different boards, um, I think this can be incredibly helpful in your development and understanding of, of different flop spots, flop spots. So without any further ado, uh, I'd like to just jump right into the spreadsheet and walk through uh, just the main features and components of it uh, over the course of the rest of this video. So let's hop on over. All right, so when you open up the workbook, uh, the first thing you're gonna see is this main info tab, and I'll go through this in a second, but if I look at the bottom of the screen, just going through just the interface, uh, what you'll see is 13 tabs at the bottom, and I'll go through just the, the components of each of those uh, in just a second. You'll also see that this was built in Excel. It kind of looks like Excel, and it's gonna open up just like an Excel spreadsheet does, um, but it does have a lot of functionality stripped out of Excel itself. So uh, we don't have uh, the top ribbon bars and a lot of the functionality. We don't have the ability to um, enter formulas and things like that. Um, I, I've really locked down a lot of the components uh, of um, the uh, details within the spreadsheet themselves. So the spreadsheet works um, perfectly, but uh, it's, um, you know, a lot of the formulas are hidden and a lot of the data in there is protected. And then, you know, third, it's, it's locked down from an activation standpoint. So when you do open this for the first time, you have to uh, enter an activation key and that activation key is tied to your specific hardware. Uh, that's mainly for, um, piracy reasons. I don't want uh, um, the software to be uh, shared widely. Um, if you if you purchased it, um, you know, you have access to your own license. Um, but this is this way it can't be duplicated and, and, and shared widely. Um, the second reason is just for um, intellectual property, uh, uh, my own intellectual property and, and protecting that uh, to make sure that I'm not necessarily sharing all of the underlying work that goes into the creation uh, of a lot of uh, the components of this software itself. Uh, but that said, uh, the, the workbook is fully functional and uh, there are ways that you can take the things within this workbook and um, utilize it in a lot of your own analyses. And I'll get into that in a second too as well. So 
uh, this first tab is just the info tab, and this is going to give you a little bit more information about uh, the spreadsheet itself. So I have um, just a main purpose of the workbook. Um, I also have uh, a little bit about how to actually use this um, with a few links to uh, different uh, content on my website that I dive into a little bit deeper um, when I just kind of show examples of analyses that I uh, put together using this as a baseline. Um, towards the bottom of the workbook here, we have the individual um, tabs, and I have details for each of those individual tabs, uh, which I um, uh, link to those. So if you click on any of these links, it'll shortcut you directly to one of these tabs. Um, version control. So right now this is version one. Um, if you do purchase this workbook, uh, you will have uh, lifetime access uh, to any up updated versions. Uh, so uh, if I create... Um, uh, an additional update where I add more functionality to this worksheet. Uh, you can have access, you'll have access to that and I'll make sure that uh, whoever purchased the, purchases this gets an email that there is a new version available and they can download uh, the uh, most recent version available um, uh, that uh, for that particular spreadsheet that they had purchased in the first place. So just a basic info tab here. Um, second tab here is around definitions. So these are all of the metrics that are utilized within the workbook, as well as the specific definition for each of those uh, metrics. I, I'm not going to go into those in detail here. Um, we have a summary tab. And the summary tab here shows, for this particular workbook, um, the 32 formations that I solved for um, the data within the workbook itself. And um, I covered this in my previous video, but these are 32 formations, both single raised pot and three bet pot formations, um, both on offense and defense. Um, all of this is for nine handed uh, cash games uh, with 200 big blind effective stacks. Now, I actually plan on making a second version of this product um, and release that over the course of the next couple weeks, um, where I essentially have the same exact carbon copy of this plot product, uh, but for 100 big blinds, six max uh, games to mirror online. Um, and you know, if you're interested actually in uh, uh, purchasing this product for using a different subset of ranges, I can actually replicate any set of ranges um, in this product itself. Uh, so, you know, if there are specific ranges that uh, any of you uh, utilize yourselves and um, want to uh, look at the data in, in those particular ways or any other specific configurations that you're interested in, just reach out to me and we can figure out a way in which I can build something customized for you uh, to um, show all of the data that I'm showing here as well. Uh, one of the things you'll also see here is you're going to see a lot of these little comments. Um, so any time that you can kind of hover over these, uh, you can actually uh, see some comments that I've actually put in here. So, for instance, each of these individual formations, um, I do publish all of the actual ranges for the formations as well, too. So uh, you can essentially take all of the data in here and then replicate this within the solver of your own choice uh, to dive into some more micro level um, construction studies as well too. Um, the next couple tabs here, so I have a tab on flops which show these are the 184 flops that um, we studied as a result of uh, this workbook. Um, so starting with you know ace high flops so ace 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 flops or ace ace flops all the way down to uh the bottom where we actually have a four three deuce monotone flop so um there's really a lot of different types of flops for each of those flops i have um various uh, uh grouping structures i have um uh, I've grouped them into different uh, types of uh, textures. Um, I grouped it based off of the whether it's a trips board, a paired board, an unpaired board, um, the suitedness of the board, and then the connectedness of the board. And then for the 184 flops, I have some stats here to show how that actually breaks out um, for each of these different uh, segments. Um, so, for instance, uh, of the 184 flops, if I'm looking at the different flush type boards, 73 of those boards are rainbow boards, 96 of those boards are two-tone boards, and 15 of those boards are monotone boards. So um, you know, for more information on the 184 flops, you can just go to the, the PO Solver blog. Um, they have a subset of 184 uh, flops that they have uh, 
utilized as a proxy to model the entire game. Um, I found that it actually works fairly well in terms of uh, modeling the entire game. Um, but you know, I've written a little bit more about that on my website, and I've also uh, you know linked to that uh, that site as well too on PO Solver, and you can read more about that as well too. Uh, the formations tab. So this is where we actually start diving into some of the data itself. Um, I each of these rows represents one of the uh, 32 formations. So we have our offense in position, offense out of position, defense in position, defense out of position formations. Um, for each of the 184 flops, we can actually see um, the EV percentage distribution. And what the EV percentage is just a function of our EV and big blinds divided by the pot size. So um, anything over 50% EV percentage distribution means that we are on average um, making, uh, according to the solves at equilibrium, we are on average making greater than 50% of the pot. Um, anything less than 50%, we are making on average less than 50% of the pot. Uh, so, you know, not surprisingly, um, and I, I, I have this kind of hist histogram style distribution here to show um, how many of these individual flops fit into the different buckets. Uh, so unsurprisingly, uh, you know, when we're on offense, we're going to tend to, for the most part, always be, um, especially offense in position, we are for the most part going to uh, have an EV distribution greater than 50%, meaning that we are, for the most part, going to um, earn greater than 50% of the pot. Uh, as we go out of position, there are some flops that are going to be worse than us than others. And, you know, even though we are, have the uncapped range in offense here, um, you know, we're going to have some boards where we underrealize our equity and we actually earn less than 50% of the pot. Um, and then as we kind of shift down to defensive ranges, where uh, formations where we are capped, um, you're going to start seeing that shift more and more. It's going to be somewhat the inverse of our boards up here, uh, where we're more than likely going to be earning less than 50% of the pots. So again, a really just useful way of, of looking at, uh, on average, what's the distribution of flops that we should be looking at and to give us a good sense of, of where of how many boards are actually good for us and, and, and the types of boards that are actually good for us, which we can dig into on, you know, some of the subsequent uh, um, parts of the workbook. Uh, for each of those different formations, I have um, the aggregated success metrics. So just showing the overall pot size, uh, what's our range, our equities range versus our opponent's equities range in this formation. Um, again, across all um uh, for me, uh, all, all boards in this, not necessarily off of one individual board, but aggregated across all board, what's our range of equity versus our opponents? Um, what's the EV at equilibrium that we earn? Uh, what does that work out to in terms of uh, a percent of the pot? And then what is our equity realization percentage? So anything over 100%, we are over-realizing our equity. Anything under 100%, we are actually under-realizing our equity. And then finally, um, our strategic frequencies. So in this spot here in position, um, we would mostly expect the villain to check to us. And when they do, these are our equilibrium frequencies, betting two thirds pot, you know, this percentage of the time, betting one thirds pot, this percentage of the time, and checking this percentage of the time. Um, in the spots where um, villain leads into us, so this is um, the spot where villain leads into us, and it doesn't happen that frequently here, but when they do, um, we would be raising this percentage of the time at equilibrium, calling this percentage of the time at equilibrium, and folding this percentage of the time at equilibrium. So again, just showing us you know high-level frequencies across all of the formations, and all of these metrics are aggregated across all boards for these individual formations. Uh, again, I have these notes, which just kind of show the um, details of what you're going to see in each of these different um, uh, categories. So moving forward, the next eight tabs are broken out for each of these four different groups. So we have offense in position, offense out of position, defense in position, defense out of position. Um, and you kind of see this break up here. We have some single raise pots and some three bet pots. Uh, but for each of these, we essentially have grouped all of these formations into these four different categories. And for each of these four different categories, uh, we have two tabs each. There's a macro tab and a micro tab. And I'll just show you the in position offense, macro and micro. Uh, and the rest of these are fairly, are essentially the exact same. So the macro tab, 
the first thing that you're going to see is uh, this drop down and when you hover over this you can see that you can choose a formation with the drop down menu and change the data within this worksheet and that's going to change everything in this tab the imposition offense macro as well as the imposition offense micro so uh, this one drop down works for these two spreadsheets um, each of the four groups of workbooks um, have their own drop down menus on the top of the macro tab uh, so when I click on the drop down, I see all of the formation. So in this case here is the um, formations for the in position offense. Uh, so the three three bit pod formations that we saw on the previous uh, page, as well as the six uh, single race pod formations. Um, and you can see that the data changes when um, I actually select one of these. So right now this is a big blind versus small blind formation. Our pot size is 24 big blinds. Um, our SPR stack to pot ratio is 8.3. If I pick something different, so in this case here, I might just pick the late position versus big blind uh, formation. Now my pot size is eight and a half big blinds. The SPR is 23.5 and the rest of the data changes. Um, when I also have this formation up, you can see that uh, outside the formation details, I have the average across all 184 flops. And this row is a carbon copy of what we saw on the previous slide so um, or the pre previous page so equity uh, is 51.6 percent um, ev is 5.15 if i go back to the previous page um, for the late position versus big blind formation equity is 51.6 percent uh, ev 5.15 this is the pop size of 8.5 big blinds um, all of this data is essentially just a copy from the previous page it's meant to be a reference so that when you look at all of the data below, you can compare it to what it looks like versus the entire average. And I'll, I'll show you why that's important in just a sec. Uh, the data below, all of the metrics are actually the same exact metrics that we saw on the previous formations tab. It's just looking at various uh, cuts of the data. So first, um, everything within this tab is all based off of your dropdown. So whereas on this previous tab, I have um, 32 different formations and the 32 different rows representing those formations. Um, this tab is going to dive into one of those formations or whatever formation that you actually select. Um, and you can actually see how these stats break out across the different types of boards. So um, first looking at just texture. So um, on texture, we can see, well, we have 15 mono, monotone flops, we have 85 two-tone flops, we have uh, 51 rainbow flops, we have 20 paired rainbow flops, we have 11 paired two-tone flops, and we have two trips flops. Um, and then for each one of those groups of flops, we can see exactly the same thing as we saw previously. So what is the EV distribution for any of those? Um, what is the equity EV, EV percentage, um, and equity realization for each of one of, the, one of those? And then what's our strategic actions um, for each uh, groups uh, as well too? Now, why is this actually important and why is this actually valuable? So, you know, first, this is where you can start getting some insights into uh, do we, should we be doing different things um, on different uh, board types or board textures? Uh, so, you know, a couple of things that come out right away. So this is a, a late position versus a big blind single raise pot. Um, what I have some of the, I have some conditional formatting on here. So I have it highlighted green if the value is uh, greater than one standard deviation above the average and red if the value is greater than one standard deviation below the average. Uh, so we can see that, uh, you know, on this in this particular formation, uh, we're actually not doing as well as compared to our average as well or the rest of these uh, formations on monotone boards. Um, and as we kind of work our way downwards, we can start seeing, um, well, you know, we're also not doing as well on, you know, some of these ace high boards up here, um, whereas we're doing much, much, much better on, you know, some of these uh, low, 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 medium, low, low, um, high, low, low boards uh, where we earn a, a higher EV and uh, realize our equity more effectively um, than, 
than the average at least here too. So uh, again, this is just a good way of starting to take different groups of boards or board types and look at them together. Um, we can assume that, and we can get some, develop some good insights from this. So, you know, if we start seeing that we are taking certain lines or we are, you know, putting more of our range into um, a larger bet size, putting more of our range into a check size. We see types of boards where maybe villains leading a little bit more against us. Um, we're going to be able to start seeing different characteristics of the boards uh, that um, create the necessary conditions um, at equilibrium uh, for our opponents to be able to do certain things or for us to be able to do certain things um, against our opponents. Um, and, you know, getting those insights or kind of uh, confirming certain concepts uh, can really help us. And if we, when we start understanding at equilibrium, it can really help us um, better develop exploitative strategies to um, react against uh, things that we're actually seeing in our own environments. So, uh, you know, again, I think this is a, is a really interesting way of, of, of actually just looking at a lot of this data is um, breaking things out and uh, taking light groups of boards and analyzing them together. The second one of the two tabs that you'll actually see, and I'm not going to go through the, all of the details of this, just know that um, we have this broken out by all of these different groups that I showed right here. So um, you know, texture, straight types, uh, straight boards, flush boards, um, full house boards, um, all of the different groupings. Um, that's all broken out uh, down here, and we have those same exact metrics, which are our success metrics, um, our strategic frequencies. When you know this case here, where we're in position if villain checks versus if villain leads, um, and you know we can kind of see the same thing, uh, you know, on some of these subsequent tabs as well too here. But basically, all of our strategic um, frequencies and and when in different scenarios uh, when. Um, we are against um, our opponent on the flop. On the second tab, the micro tab, this is where we actually show, again, the same metrics, but now instead of looking at this at the aggregate view, we can look go down to the individual um, board level view. So now we see all 184 flops in order and then all of our metrics for each of those flops. So our equity, our EV, our EV percentage, our EQR, um, and then our individual strategic frequencies. Um, it's still based off of the same uh, drop-down menu from the previous sheet. So we have late position versus big blind. If I change this here to, let's say, middle position versus small blind, uh, now this tab is based off of the middle position versus small blind. Um, our average is still the same too, so now we can compare any of these individual rows to this average. Um, but we also have these uh, filters here on the table, which let us do a little bit more nuanced views of things. So uh, one of the things I like to do is, is, is look at different types of boards together. So maybe I want to uh, look at two-tone boards that I have a gut shot on, so I can change my filters to look at two-tone boards and my straight section to say gut shots. And I have in here a group of boards uh, that are now two-tone boards. They are gut shot boards. And now I can just analyze this set of boards specifically uh, without having to go into, um, uh, you know, try to sort through each of those uh, separately. I can also try to pick out, you know, are, is there anything specifically about this type of board um, that uh, maybe lends itself to uh, betting more, betting less, uh, checking more, um, you know, giving us higher, um, do we realize our equity better on certain types of these boards versus um, others? Uh, so it gives me a good sense of just some of the overall insights uh, that I can gleam from these boards as well. And then where I want to dive into something specifically. So, you know, for instance, let's say I'm looking at uh, this Ace-King-7 two-tone board here. Uh, maybe I want to actually dive into this itself. I can always go back to uh, my summary and look at the ranges that I actually utilize for this, uh, throw this into PO Solver and um, actually get into the specific hand classes that uh, we might be doing with uh, the specific hand classes that um, actually might be betting versus checking versus um, you know betting large versus betting small. 
the other things that you could do on this, so I, I've showed kind of multiple um, uh, filtering. Uh, I also do like uh, just doing things based off of just the grouping. I think that's a really good way of actually looking at this. So uh, I think I covered this in my last uh, um, video here, but you know, a, a common board to look at is like the Ace, Ace Wheel Wheel boards. Uh, so you can start just getting down to that level and, you know, ace wheel wheel boards, are they, do we do different things, whether it's two tone versus rainbow, um, you know, uh, how should we be handling, uh, these types of boards in this formation versus other formations, right? So there's a lot of different ways in which you can actually use this data in here to gleam some good insights now. Okay. So we got a lot of great stuff in here. It's, it's in Excel, um, obviously we want to be doing some cool things in Excel with it. And I understand that. I mean, you know, I, 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 I part of me, um, really wants to distribute, uh, I would love to distribute the entire, um, unprotected workbook. Uh, but also realizing that, um, that sets up, uh, the possibility for, um, piracy there too. Uh, but what I have made available is um, being able to copy and paste the data into another workbook to do some further analysis. So um, we have, so suppose you actually want to uh, take a look at uh, those ace triple wheel boards and I'll just go back to the boards itself. And we have this set of five boards. Um, I can take this group of boards um, and while I can't do anything with the formula bar, I can use the keyboard shortcuts and copy and open up a new workbook and paste things into the new workbook. Now, what you'll see here is this um, pop-up that comes, which is we can't paste formulas and I'm not gonna um, share the, the formulas of the data, but what it does show is the data itself. So now we have our own workbook um, with all of the data in here. Uh, that we can just do any types of analysis that we want on and um, dive into this a little bit more. So, uh, you know, it's the options there for you to um, utilize this in um, any functionality that you want um, and take the data and, 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 and throw it into a different Excel workbook and uh, do some uh, uh, further work and extend on some of this uh, that I had put together. Uh, the rest of the workbook is essentially just based off of the other groups of, uh, of, of uh, formations. So um, we have our out of position offense macro and micro. We have our, and here it's uh, because we're out of position now, it's we're leading. And so we have the first action. We bet two thirds, bet one thirds or check. Um, if... Uh, um, uh, we don't go, uh, you know, it's, what is our, um, how often does, does the villain bet? Uh, and if they do bet, uh, how often, uh, do we check, raise, check, call, check, fold, um, for defense, um, when we're in position, um, how often does villain check? How often does, does villain lead? Uh, if, and then the micro details for that. And then finally out of position, if we're, um, out of position, uh, do we lead into them um, or check uh, on defense? Or And if we do um, check, how often does villain bet? Um, if they do bet, uh, how often do we check raise, check call, or check fold? Uh, and you can kind of see the details uh, in here as well too for the micro. So that's uh, essentially the, the details uh, of this workbook. Again, I, I'm really excited about this. Uh, it's, it's something that I've been working on for uh, the on and off really for the better part of, of the last year, uh, I've noticed an incredible gain in my own abilities um, and just being able to I better identify different flop types um, and better have a, a sense of, of comfort and confidence in my ability to, um, to construct uh, a, a, a really good strategy on those different flop types uh, to combat my opponents. Um, this has helped me really have a good understanding of equilibrium frequencies, um, which in turn has greatly helped me uh, uh, hone my exploitative uh, game um, by being able to have some type of baseline from which I can actually compare um, a lot of the, the things that I see um, in, in my player pool. Um, 
as I mentioned, this is uh, not going to be the only version of this. Um, you know, the way I've actually built this is uh, the whole, what you see here is just the front end of the workbook. Uh, I can actually um, change the back end data set with really any uh, group of formations. All I really need is two ranges and, uh, you know, can go from there. So I'm in process right now of um, running my computer uh, at nights to uh, develop a version of this for online for six max 100 big blind deep games. Um, for that, I'm actually, so for this, I'm using uh, my own ranges, um, as well as ranges that I've developed from Upswing. Uh, for the online version, I actually have a, uh, a set of equilibrium ranges that I had purchased uh, from an equilibrium preflop solve. Uh, so I plan on putting this together for that. Um, I might have another iteration where I look at um, super deep, like 300 big blind games. Um, and then, you know, I, I also have some plans to potentially try to start developing some type of similar workbook to look at uh, various turn situations, too. So that's that's, you know, really up in the, the roadmap. But, you know, again, this is something that, you know, has helped me incredibly. Uh, and I really think that it can help, uh, you know, those of you out there who also are really into the data of the game and like to do a lot of independent study and independent work. So. Uh, if you have any questions or um, you know thoughts or comments, uh, um, please feel free to let me know in, in the, the comments section below. Uh, reach out to me on my website. There's a contact form on my website. Uh, happy to answer any questions about this. Um, it will be available uh, for sale um, on my website. So you can go right to my website, um, lukic.io. Um, in the product section, um, this specific workbook will be available for uh, $250. Uh, the... Um, uh, the online one will also be available for that same price. Um, and, um, you know, if you're interested in, in me developing a custom version of this for you, um, again, reach out to me and we can kind of figure out what, what's the uh, appropriate, uh, level of effort, um, uh, for actually putting that together too. So, uh, again, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and thanks again for watching, uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye.